Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at yet another macOS Big Sur clone. The clone we're going to be taking a look at today is iBoontu 2.0. If you don't remember, a few weeks ago, I took a look at a macOS Mavericks clone known as ParaOS 8. And then about two weeks after that, I took a look at ParaOS Cupertino, which was a copy of Big Sur. However, ParaOS Cupertino's performance was extremely underwhelming, in fact it lagged in almost everything, and it was definitely not usable as a day-to-day -day distribution, which is why I've determined that that is one of my least favorite Linux distributions. However, in the comments of both of those videos, people recommended me to check out iBuntu. iBuntu, like I said, is just another macOS clone or is it? I've heard that this Linux distribution is very well optimized and it looks almost exactly like Big Sur. I've avoided watching any videos or even logging into the operating system. Uh, this is after the first boot. I haven't installed anything, so we're going to be going through the installer as well as the live CD. So I've just booted off the live installer. It did take a while to boot, but we're here now. Um, just taking a look at the lock screen, it obviously looks like an Ubuntu one, um, but for the live CD, it just says, please just press enter. So pressing enter, um, the whole screen goes black, and we get this nice little loading animation here. You can definitely see if you look closer around the logos that there is a black outline. It was very noticeable right there. Besides a little bit of lag on the dock, uh, this looks pretty promising. Um, already we have our drives over here, iBuntu 2.0, and our I, we have our drives over here with the DVD and the hard drive. Um, we've got our logos up here. Um, some things are lagging a little bit, but overall performance seems better. Um, but before we get into the actual operating system review, let's go ahead and install Ubuntu. So this basically just looks like a standard Ubuntu installer, except maybe a little bit of customization. Um, I don't see anything special here. I don't really see anything different about this installer. It's It just looks normal. But we can take a look here and see the desktop itself is just pure beautiness. I'm pretty sure that's not even a word. A new mission control, all windows together and easily switch between screens, which I like mission control. I kind of miss it since I switched to windows, but overall, uh, we'll still check that out. We can see right here that this window is titled Apple Music. They have to be getting sued or something for that. All right, so iBuntu has officially installed. All we have to do is go ahead and click done and now we can restart. All right, so the first thing after we've actually installed the distribution is that the user account isn't listed here. We have to enter our own username. So for me, I just made this Ubuntu and then I made a standard password. And now we're logging into our officially installed distribution. The first thing that we're experiencing is it's not as smooth as macOS, which is kind of expected because it's Linux and a lot of weird customizations have obviously been installed. That loading animation wasn't exactly the smoothest thing ever. But we're here. We are in the distribution. And the first thing that I find funny uh, is the battery symbol uh, because there is no battery in this computer. Maybe it's just a power symbol, it looks like, but there is no battery. This is a desktop. But just generally taking a look around the user interface, we can see that it looks pretty similar. The Apple logo is obviously not centered as it should be. It's more in the left, but it's, it's all there. Everything is there. Um, we see down at the dock, moving our cursor across things is a little laggy, but then again, this is a, this is a Linux distribution. It's not going to be as refined as Apple's own operating systems. So taking a look at the Launchpad Plasma, we can see that it is laggy. Alright, so here we have all the installed stuff like the Office Suite, Dolphin, Kate Console, Casis Guard, System Settings, and Google Chrome. But then this is where I find it hard to believe that they haven't gotten in any legal trouble yet. We have Apple Music, Arc, Boot Repair, Calendar, Calibre, with the exact same logo that Apple uses for iBooks, um, Desk Mode Switcher, Dolphin, Easy Stroke Gesture Record, Elisa Gestures Chrome Gwenview with the exact same icon, <laughs> Ubuntu Update Tool, iCloud Calendar, yet again using the brand iCloud, um, iCloud Contacts, iCloud Drive, iCloud, again, iCloud, iCloud Find My iPhone, iCloud, 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 iCloud. Um, there's a significant amount of apps that have iCloud in them installed on this distribution that use the exact same icon that Apple does. Info Center, Input Method, the Photo Booth, which I don't know how to pronounce that, Kate, KCow, KDE Connect, KDE SMS, Partition Manager, Color Paint Console, Krita, K Guard, K System Log, K K Torrent, K Wallet Manager, Latte, and then the Office Suite, 
and that's pretty much all that comes installed on here. So I find this extremely hard to believe that they haven't gotten sued yet. Up here in the Kapple menu, or the Kipple menu, we have About This Computer, which brings up uh, the system information. Um, again, moving around is very laggy, but the good thing is this is not as bad. This is nowhere near as bad as ParaOS was. ParaOS was a nightmare. Um, so this is a welcome change, the fact that things are actually responsive. Um, taking a look up here in this menu, it is grayed out because we don't have anything open. But we have file, settings, help. One thing that I would like to see, um, if the developer is watching this, um, the transparent frost glass, carry it across, if that's possible. I mean, it kind of looks weird. You have frost glass and then white. Um, so let's take a look at Dolphin. Did they theme this at all? Or, eh, they kind of did, not really. Um, the icons have changed. Uh, these are not the same icons that macOS usage, which is thankful. I'm glad that they are not going to get sued over that. Uh, let's open up Notes, iCloud Notes. Uh, see if we can actually log in with an iCloud account. Um, it is taking a while to load, which makes me think that it is opening an iCloud something. Um, oh my. So this is legitimately a web browser that goes to Apple's iCloud sign-in page and then would go into Notes. I'm not signing into this, because for all I know, this could be a totally fake Apple website. There's no URL bar. Um, I'm not signing into this, but it's literally a web browser that logs into Notes. How have they not gotten sued for this? The, the App Store is obviously something that they can't get online, because you actually have to be able to download apps. Um, as we can see, it's it looks like a software it looks like a software catalog. I don't think it's the Ubuntu one because I've never seen this screen on an Ubuntu software center. I would imagine it's something else like whatever this is. What is this? It is just software with the exact same Big Sur logo. I'm taking a look at Ubuntu One. This is obviously the Catalina based version, uh, and as we can see, it's running on an Acer laptop. But I mean every. But, I mean, it says the same thing. This is literally the same article, except with different screenshots. Now, let's take a look at their legal issues section. Because, as I've said, I feel like this is, an, this is illegal for them to ship. But, first of all, I need to explain why this article is necessary. We have so many folks out there whose only goal is... Whose only goal, it seems, to harm others because they don't have a real life. That's definitely something you should put in your legal notice. I, I'm not worried about anything that this really says. I'm more worried about um, the icons, which I believe it did mention, but also iCloud, the iCloud names being shipped in the operating system. That's what I would be more worried about. Um, but overall, I'm not complaining with this distribution. Um, it is definitely a lot better than the other one was. This is definitely much better responsiveness and looks than ParaOS Cupertino was, and I would definitely recommend this to someone who's switching from macOS to Linux. Um, but for someone who's looking to try out one, I would highly recommend this over ParaOS Cupertino, as ParaOS Cupertino was a mess. So to, so to the developers of Ubuntu, I give you props. This is an amazing operating system despite the questionable names of some of the apps that are included. With that being said, make sure to like and subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos and device restorations. And with that, I'll see you all in the next one.